So first off, I want to start with the cams. It's the engine and literally the powerhouse of this boat. When you draw this bow back, you'll feel it's really, really smooth. You don't have that huge dump in the lead off either. And you don't have that huge peak in front when you start drawing the bow. The wall is also super solid. You, you don't feel any sponginess at all. Overall, the cam draws really smooth, but it ain't lazy either. So this bow shoots 309 feet per second. It is set on 70.9 pounds. Uh, with an arrow of 405 uh, grains and my draw length is set to 29 so that's more than enough for me it is also really easy to change the draw length too there's no need to replace the modules just loosen two screws move it to your desired length and setting a being the longest on 50.5 and you can go all the way down to 25 inch and adjust in half inch increments but the other cool thing is when you move the modules your draw stop moves with it you don't have to adjust a peg afterwards. Another home run for me is the grip. It's integrated like on a target bow. You can see it's also leaned a bit forward. You have a nice flat back and with rounded corners so that you can reduce bow torque. The grip is not too thick or too thin either. I would say it's actually a bit thinner than the Matthews Vertex and a bit thicker than the Bowtech SR6. The overall balance. Without the kit on, it tends to fall a bit backwards, which is a good thing for me. You don't really need to do much to get it balanced to your personal preference and it is really easy to manipulate it with weights at the distal ends of the stabilizers. You also see that the limbs on this bow is actually a bit different from the normal Evo 31. I'm also a really huge fan of this Relegard system. It has less wear on the cables, it's super quiet, and they are super smooth as well. Now, when they do get wet, they don't build up friction like the more traditional Teflon blocks, as you can get on your wet target bows. This is also a bit more stripped down than on the Evoke 31. You'll see it doesn't have a caged riser here on the top and the bottom, and they actually did a really good job because it doesn't look flimsy and it doesn't feel that way either. It delivers on consistency and I think personally that they've left enough meat on the riser to keep it strong enough. But to shave 0.3 pounds, that's actually a lot, especially on aluminum and it's still solid. Huge thumbs up. So when it comes to tuning, this bow is really versatile. You obviously have your shim system so that you can move your cams around. Each limb has a different deflection so I swapped them out to obtain a perfectly straight cam, uh, top and bottom actually, and it makes sense because everything is running in a straight line. Even my rest at center shot shoots bullet holes. Then if you have issues with clearance on your high profile veins, you can actually twist the flex rod system a bit outwards in order to clear them. This is still the live wire factory strings that it comes with and it's by far some of the better factory strings that I've seen. I haven't had any cam timing issues with it uh, upon setting it up and I think it's pretty solid and it's good for your wallet too. So you'll also see that the bow comes with limb dampers, shock rods in the riser and the string stopper to silence the bow and reduce vibration. My personal opinion on this bow, I feel like you can set it up for just about anyone, even for women who want to hunt. It has huge draw length variations, you can back out the limb bolts uh, quite a few turns and it's really light so even if you have a bad shoulder you don't have to worry about heavy weight this bow weighs the same as a weight rx3 which is a carbon bow sorry for the sudden change in the scenery guys the wind outside picked up quite badly and made it nearly impossible to shoot outside um, i wanted to mention a few things still and probably the most important is the accuracy and the shootability now I had the chance to test this bow up until 50 meters and I must say that I'm impressed. I shot some decent groupings, real tight and with the making of this video I actually busted a few knocks on 40 yards. So there's no doubt about it that this thing is deadly accurate. The vibration and sound of this bow is not bad either. Of course it's a lightweight bow but if you have a decent set of stabilizers on it you'll be getting rid of most of the sound and vibration anyway. So the big question is 
Will I buy this bow with my own money? And the short answer is yes, I would totally do it. The bow is super versatile in terms of specs. I personally think that the cam systems are underrated and it will also come in a bit cheaper than the normal Evoke 31. So some of you might have seen it, but this bow is not on PSE's website yet. I will put the specs of this bow in the description below. And if you feel like I've left something out on this bow, or you want to know something a bit more specific, make sure uh, to comment below and I'll be happy to respond. So thank you guys for watching. Um, if you like this video, please remember to leave a thumbs up and do all the other stuff that YouTubers harass you to do. And I'll see you in the next video.